Why are we saved by faith? Why is faith selected as the channel of salvation? No doubt this inquiry is often made. By grace are ye saved, through faith, is assuredly the doctrine of Holy Scripture and the ordinance of God. But why is it so? Why is faith selected rather than hope, or love, or patience? It becomes us to be modest in answering such a question, for God's ways are not always to be understood, nor are we allowed presumptuously to question them. Humbly we would reply that, as far as we can tell, faith has been selected as the channel of grace because there is a natural adaptation in faith to be used as the receiver. Suppose that I am about to give a poor man an alms. I put it in his hand. Why? Well, it would hardly be fitting to put it into his ear or to lay it upon his foot. The hand seems to be made on purpose to receive. So, in our mental frame, faith is created on purpose to be a receiver. It is the hand of the man, and there is a fitness in receiving grace by its means. Do let me put this very plainly. Faith which receives Christ is as simple an act as when your child receives an apple from you, because you hold it out and promise to give him the apple if he comes for it. The belief and the receiving relate only to an apple, but they make up precisely the same act as the faith which deals with eternal salvation. What the child's hand is to the apple, that your faith is to the perfect salvation of Christ. The child's hand does not make the apple, nor improve the apple, nor deserve the apple. It only takes it, and faith is chosen by God to be the receiver of salvation, because it does not pretend to create salvation, nor help in it, but is content humbly to receive it. Faith is the tongue that begs pardon, the hand which receives it, and the eye which sees it, but it is not the price which buys it. Faith never makes herself her own plea. She rests all her argument upon the blood of Christ. She becomes a good servant to bring the riches of the Lord Jesus to the soul, because she acknowledges whence she drew them, and owns that grace alone entrusted her with them. Faith, again, is doubtless selected because it gives all the glory to God. It is of faith that it might be by grace, and it is of grace that there might be no boasting, for God cannot endure pride. The proud he knoweth afar off, and he has no wish to come nearer to them. He will not give salvation in a way which will suggest or foster pride. Paul saith, Not of works, lest any man should boast. Now faith excludes all boasting. The hand which receives charity does not say, I am to be thanked for accepting the gift. And that would be absurd. When the hand conveys bread to the mouth, it does not say to the body, Thank me, for I feed you. It is a very simple thing that the hand does, though a very necessary thing, and it never arrogates glory to itself for what it does. So God has selected faith to receive the unspeakable gift of His grace, because it cannot take to itself any credit, but must adore the gracious God who is the giver of all good. Faith sets the crown upon the right head, and therefore the Lord Jesus was wont to put the crown upon the head of faith, saying, Thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. Next, God selects faith as the channel of salvation because it is a sure method linking man with God. When man confides in God, there is a point of union between them, and that union guarantees blessing. Faith saves us because it makes us cling to God, and so brings us into connection with Him. I have often used the following illustration, but I must repeat it because I cannot think of a better. I am told that years ago, a boat was upset above the falls of Niagara, and two men were being carried down the current, when persons on the shore managed to float a rope out to them, which rope was seized by them both. One of them held fast to it, and was safely drawn to the bank. But the other, seeing a great log come floating by, unwisely let go the rope and clung to the log, 
for it was the bigger thing of the two, and apparently better to cling to. Alas, the log, with the man on it, went right over the vast abyss, because there was no union between the log and the shore. The size of the log was no benefit to him who grasped it. It needed a connection with the shore to produce safety. So when a man trusts to his works, or to sacraments, or to anything of that sort, he will not be saved, because there is no junction between him and Christ. But faith, though it may seem to be like a slender cord, is in the hands of the great God on the shore side. Infinite power pulls in the connecting line, and thus draws the man from destruction. Oh, the blessedness of faith, because it unites us to God. Faith is chosen again, because it touches the springs of action. Even in common things, faith of a certain sort lies at the root of all. I wonder whether I shall be wrong if I say that we never do anything except through faith of some sort. If I walk across my study, it is because I believe my legs will carry me. A man eats because he believes in the necessity of food. He goes to business because he believes in the value of money. He accepts a check because he believes the bank will honor it. Columbus discovered America because he believed that there was another continent beyond the ocean, and the Pilgrim Fathers colonized it because they believed that God would be with them on those rocky shores. Most grandees have been born of faith. For good or for evil, faith works wonders by the man in whom it dwells. Faith in its natural form is an all-prevailing force, which enters into all manner of human actions. Possibly, he who derides faith in God is the man who, in an evil form, has the most of faith. Indeed, he usually falls into a credulity which would be ridiculous if it were not disgraceful. God gives salvation to faith, because by creating faith in us he thus touches the real mainspring of our emotions and actions. He has, so to speak, taken possession of the battery, and now he can send the sacred current to every part of our nature. When we believe in Christ, and the heart has come into the possession of God, then we are saved from sin, and are moved toward repentance, holiness, zeal, prayer, consecration, and every other gracious thing. What oil is to the wheels, what weights are to a clock, what wings are to a bird, what sails are to a ship, that faith is to all holy duties and services. Have faith, and all other graces will follow and continue to hold their course. Faith, again, has the power of working by love. It influences the affections towards God, and draws the heart after the best things. He that believes in God will beyond all question love God. Faith is an act of the understanding but it also proceeds from the heart. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and hence God gives salvation to faith, because it resides next door to the affections, and is near akin to love, and love is the parent and the nursery of every holy feeling and act. Love to God is obedience. Love to God is holiness. To love God and to love man is to be conformed to the image of Christ. And this is salvation. Moreover, faith creates peace and joy. He that hath it rests, and is tranquil, is glad and joyous, and this is a preparation for heaven. God gives all heavenly gifts to faith, for this reason among others, that faith worketh in us the life and spirit which are to be eternally manifested in the upper and better world. Faith furnishes us with armor for this life, and education for the life to come. It enables a man both to live and to die without fear. It prepares both for action and for suffering, and hence the Lord selects it as a most convenient medium for conveying grace to us, and thereby securing us for glory. Certainly faith does for us what nothing else can do. It gives us joy and peace, and causes us to enter into rest. Why do men attempt to gain salvation by other means? An old preacher says, A silly servant who was bidden to open a door, 
sets his shoulder to it and pushes with all his might, but the door stirs not, and he cannot enter, use what strength he may. Another comes with a key and easily unlocks the door and enters right readily. Those who would be saved by works are pushing at heaven's gate without result, but faith is the key which opens the gate at once. Reader, will you not use that key? The Lord commands you to believe in his dear Son, therefore you may do so, and doing so you shall live. Is not this the promise of the gospel? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved? Mark 16.16 16. What can be your objection to a way of salvation which commends itself to the mercy and the wisdom of our gracious God?